So we come to the development of the tongue. The development of the tongue begins by about the fourth week of intrauterine life. So what happens, dear students, is that the medial most part of the mandibular arches, they proliferate to form the lingual swellings. So we have the lingual swellings shown in red color here. And just behind the lingual swellings, another swelling appears, which separates them, and that is called the tuberculum impar. So this is shown in pink color here. And just behind the tuberculum impar, we have the location of the foramen cecum. Now, in relation to the third and fourth pharyngeal arches in the midline, another swelling appears, which is called the hypobranchial eminence. And this hypobranchial eminence shows subdivision into a cranial part, which is shown by green color, and caudal part, which is shown by brown color. The cranial part is called the copola, while the caudal part it is destined to form the epiglottis. So this is a comprehensive figure which is showing you the location of the lingual swellings, the tuberculum impar, foramen cecum, and the hypobranchial eminence in relation to the arches. So the development of the anterior two-third of the tongue is from the mandibular arch. The anterior two-third of the tongue is formed by fusion of tuberculum impar with the two lingual swellings. So you can correlate with this diagram here the red color and the pink color, how the two lingual swellings and tuberculum impar are uniting to form the anterior two-third of the tongue. We see here the location of the foramen cecum and the sulcus terminalis and the sulcus terminalis is separating the anterior two-third of the tongue from the posterior one-third of the tongue. An important point I would write, like to raise here, we see that the development of the anterior two-third of the tongue is from the mandibular arch and this is the only arch which is having a dual nerve supply. The post-traumatic nerve of the arch is the lingual nerve while the pre-traumatic nerve of the arch is the corda tympani. So the nerve supply is reflected in the development. The anterior two-third of the tongue has got a dual nerve supply by the lingual nerve and the corda tympani nerve. So once again, uh, we see here the development of the anterior two-third of the tongue. Now, the posterior one-third of the tongue is derived from the cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence. I've told you before, it is called the cupola. So, this green colored structure here, and you can correlate from the diagram here that the green part is forming the posterior one-third of the tongue. Now, what happens in the formation of the posterior one-third of the tongue is that in this scenario, the third arch mesoderm, it comes and meets with the first arch mesoderm forming the anterior two-third of the tongue and the second arch mesoderm is buried underneath. So uh, the second arch mesoderm is buried underneath and the third arch mesoderm overrides it to meet the first arch mesoderm. So the posterior one-third of the tongue develops from the third arch mesoderm and therefore is supplied by the nerve of the third arch and that nerve is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Posterior most part of the tongue is developing from the fourth arch mesoderm. So this is the posterior most part of the tongue and it is developing from the fourth arch mesoderm shown by orange color here. And therefore it is supplied by the nerve of the fourth arch that is the superior laryngeal nerve. So the internal laryngeal nerve is supplying the, a branch of the superior laryngeal nerve is supplying the posterior most part of the tongue. Now we come to the musculature, epithelium, and taste buds of the tongue. The muscles of the tongue, they are derived from occipital myotomes. So these occipital myotomes, you know, they migrate to the region of the developing tongue. And the nerve supply of these occipital myotomes is hypoglossal nerve. Therefore, the nerve supply of the muscles of the tongue, which is formed from occipital myotomes, is the hypoglossal nerve. The epithelium of the tongue is first single layered. Later, it becomes stratified and the papillae are evident. The taste buds, they are formed in relation to terminal branches of the innervating nerve fibers. Now we come to the anomalies of the tongue. The tongue may be large, which is referred to as macroglossia, or small, which is referred to as microglossia. The tongue may be absent, what is called aglossia. The embryological basis of the bifid tongue is explained here. It is due to the failure of fusion of the two lingual swellings. So when they don't unite, you know, the tongue may be bifid. What is ankyloglossia? That is a tongue tie. The apical part of the tongue may be anchored to the floor of the mouth. So it may be impossible for the person to touch the upper incisors with the teeth.
with the tongue. So that is called tongue tie. When the tongue movement is restricted, the tongue cannot touch the upper incisors. And why this happens? This happens due to the thickened part, which is called the frenulum. It is a mucosal fold present on the undersurface of the tongue. And they may be that may be overdeveloped or thickened. And that may result to the tongue tie. So here we see the over thickened uh, frenulum, which is leading to the tongue tie. And the person, the movement of the tongue is restricted. The tongue tie may, may happen superiorly also, which is referred to as ankyloglossia superior. And in that case, the tongue is uh, bound to the palate. So it is attached to the palate. So that is also another form of tongue tie. So if you get a note on the development of the tongue, do mention the anomalies of the tongue also. So with that, we come to the end of this topic. I thank you for your patient hearing.